Yeah. Back at it. Like a good snack habit. What's going on, guys? Before we start this regular pro, this regular scheduled program, but I got to I got to yeah. The coldest. Uh uh-uh. uh. Stop. The coldest Black Friday, guys, has begun. Month of epic deals throughout the month, up to fifty percent off and twenty percent off the entire website at coldest.com forward slash back black friday look at that sexy looking bottle Woo! that's a sexy bottle right there boy so uh that's that's cool oh okay i think Woo! that might be mine uh, where? <laughs> where? i think that might be mine this, I don't know about that, but this is a fire bottle right here bro i'm loving this one yeah 50 to 20 50 percent off and 20 percent off the entire website come on people let's go coldest.com forward slash black friday all right go there i guess so we might not. you we have, might have a on this model. well this too cool. that's nice it really is and you're gonna keep up with it that's the question <laughs> that is the question all right let's go oh, don't pay me no mind <laughs> <I'm so fine. laughs> all right so i saw this on um on sargon's page y'all know sargon's the one who did the um British Crusades okay. against slavery. That's what you're right? Yeah. Okay. And this is a discussion with an anti-racism activist. Mm, quite uh, interesting. Anti-racism activist in it just means somebody is against racism. Right, but I'm clear. I'm but so I, I wonder is is somebody is one person a racism activist and the other person is an anti-racism activist? I'm just curious to hear the conversation. My mic is down. Huh. <laughs> you talk loud. They probably heard you. Yeah, they heard me. I don't get it. Let's I see. guess I guess he's the anti racism activist. So let's let's hear. Because she looked like she wanna say Black Lives Matter. Hello everyone, I'm interviewing Syra Rao, a former congressional candidate and racial justice activist. Uh Syra, how are you doing? I'm good, how are you? I'm very well, thank you. Thanks for agreeing to come on and have a talk with me. Um, because I've I've been following you on Twitter for a while, and I, I find myself disagreeing with your worldview, and <laughs> I, I okay. and, so, and I wanted to kind of understand see. I told you way. that's what I was going to say. So Somebody she's... has to be in a in disagreement. You yeah. know, I I was kind of thinking that maybe one of them was, you know, for something, and the other might be against something else. Yeah. So let's hear. I'm I'm interested. Sure. Um. So. I'm, I'm not. I'm not trying to grill you over any of your tweets or anything, but I, I, I'm going to have to read them out to be able to contextualize it for the audience as to what we're talking about. And so, hopefully, you can sort of expand the way that you view things on this. Um, so, uh, two days ago, you tweeted lots of chatter about an impending race war. It's starting the heavy topics at the beginning, I suppose. Um, the race war has been raging for centuries. It's been white folks beating, battling, assassinating brown and black folks. If only feels like a war to you now because you're not winning every second of every day anymore. Um, could you explain that to me, please? Mm. Sure. Um, yeah, it, it's basically, and I'm going to, I'm going to just talk specifically um, about the United States where okay. I live, born and raised. Okay. So let, let's look at the history of the United States. Um, this country is founded on genocide of indigenous people. Um, that's a fact. Uh, and then was built on the backs of enslaved African people. And, um, you know, like that's that's the history of this country. And um, we've not had truth and reconciliation here in the United States. And um, I'm sure you've heard because, you know, it's not a secret. We have a big problem with police brutality um, against brown and black folks. Um, state sanctioned assassinations. That's what that's what that is, is um, state sanctioned assassinations. And. What has happened um, since Donald Trump was elected, frankly, is, look, I'm not a fan of Donald Trump's at all, um, but I will give him this. He has exposed America. Um, he's exposed uh, white liberal America for being every bit as racist as Republicans and white conservative America. And um, that's what I mean. So what's happened in the past couple of years here is brown and black folks who have always experienced racism in this country are now really collectively and and by the way this has been happening for a while but in 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 much greater numbers 
um, are fighting back and not tolerating it and calling people out like Nancy Pelosi and Elizabeth Warren and um, Hillary Clinton, you know, like the the patron saints of of liberalism and all that is good and, and progressive for being racist. And so it feels, you know, when I was running for Congress last year, the woman um, I was running against who is who's now a 11, 12 term incumbent um, Democrat, white liberal lady in Denver kept whispering Syra Rao is starting a race war. I mean, that would be incredibly hubristic of me to say that I have started a race war. That's what I'm talking about. The race war has been going on, but it has been white people um, doing all those things that you just ticked off on my tweet. And now it feels to white folks like there's a war, uh, but the race war has been going on. They just happen to not be winning every second because we're, we're calling them out. We are not letting them win at every single turn. So that's what I meant by that tweet. I wonder what what is her position. Is she right? Um, I mean, is she, I'm sorry, is she red, blue, is she left, right? What? What is, what's her position? Uh, good question. Right, because, <clears throat> so that, that, that seems to be a huge series of statements to me. Um, and I, I mean. What do you take issue with? Uh, almost all of it, actually. Yeah, okay. Um, so Tell me I, Tell me why. Yeah, I will, I will. But I, I'm trying to I, I, I'm trying to think of which way is best to approach it in the beginning. Um, okay, so I don't really agree that the, it was a racial genocide that was okay. going on in the conquest of the Americas. I mean, there, there was... It, it's... I mean, obviously, it became about race later on, but I don't think it was consciously about race in the initial stages. Yeah. And I think the disease had more part to play in that than anything else. Uh. Um, but it, but it, I'm not trying to talk about, you know, or excuse or justify or anything like the events of the past. Of course, there were genocidal actions. No, no I, just, um, just, I, I completely disagree with that. But let me finish, this, woman. Okay. Well, I mean, I... I, I no, 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 continue, continue. Yeah, this, this is what I'm... Yeah, yeah, that's fine. Um... And so to say then, I mean, white folks beating, battling and assassinating brown and black folks, I mean, that it just seems to be a mischaracterization of what's gone on and a kind of totalizing of the narrative that's being presented uh, to demonize white people as if the, what they have done in the past is unique. And I don't believe that it has been. Mm. So... I find that kind of strange. And I, I don't think that white people currently think that they're fighting a race war. So when you say that, you know, there's a race war that's been going on for centuries and now that you're losing it, you're concerned. Uh, I don't think that they considered themselves to be fighting any kind of war. So I, I guess, yeah. So the whole, the whole tweet to me is just, I mean, it just doesn't, it, do, it doesn't fit into a worldview that I'm familiar with, is how I would feel about I wanna, it. I want to take issue with one thing, well, a lot of things that you just mm -hmm. said. Yeah. First of all, I want to be clear that I'm not demonizing white people, and we can't, we, we've got to agree on that, or else there's, there's really nothing else to talk about. Mm -hmm. I'm demonizing white supremacy. And, mm -hmm. in order, and, and, and to conflate the two is actually gaslighting. And so it's very easy to, to say... It's easy to write people like me off. And by the way, there are lots of me's. You know, I'm not yeah. super unique here. I agree. Uh, it's easy to write what we're saying off by saying that we're demonizing white people, right? right? Um, so so to, to flip this, just like white folks do, I'm not racist. I've got a brown friend. I've got an Indian friend. I've got a black friend. I can't, I'm not demonizing white people. I've got white friends. My partner uh, at my business is white. I drink milk. I like white things. I mean, <laughs> you realize how silly that sounds, right? Yeah. So I'm not demonizing white people. I'm demonizing white supremacy. And white people are, this is, and I'm, you'll probably bring up this tweet too, when I said, all, when I said all white people are racist, right? So I want to, I want to say this. We are all part and parcel of white supremacy. So how does that show up? Um, white people cannot avoid being racist because they are born and bred into it and have been marinating it in it forever. So brown and black people. Uh -uh. Uh, I don't agree. Definitely don't agree. Uh -uh. See, this, this how we get back into the emotionalism. Everything's racism. Uh -uh. Race so uh, 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 where does, how you cannot, cannot, cannot judge one person I mean, you know, you can't judge individual people based off of 
their ancestry or upbringing. No. You just, you know, you know, you just can't, so you or not even upbringing. So I'm you sorry, think because all white people coming out on being born and just got oh man from their know, ancestors. That's what I want to say from their ancestors. No, that's not the way. That's not the way. Can't avoid white supremacy because we have internalized our oppression. So what does that look like for me personally? I'll get very personal. I grew up thinking white people were better. Why did I grow up thinking white people were better? What's her because race? that's has been fed to me my entire life. You know, um, it, you'll you'll. Pr- I'm just waiting for her to say me as an African American woman. I'm waiting for it. I'm waiting for it. Probably recall British colonization of India. I just got okay. back from India. Trust me, Indian people think white people are better. It's been beaten into their heads. That's just you go all over India and their ads of literally whitewashed Indians. I don't, I don't, white people, Indians are not white. Look at me, I'm not white. Hmm. You go to India and every doll that's sold in a store is a white doll. Um, all of the ads are whitewashed, um, either whitewashed Indians or white people. And so that's what I'm talking about. You know, like I'm not talking about demonizing white people. White people have absolutely no way of not being that way. What I'm demonizing is not accepting that, getting fragile, getting de- getting defensive about it, getting angry about it, mm-hmm. calling people like me reverse racist. I can't be reverse racist. There are two parts of racism. One is Good prejudice deal. and mm-hmm. two is power. So I literally cannot be racist against white people because I don't have power over white people institutionally. So let's start with that. I'm not demonizing white people. I'm demonizing okay. white people. That, that sounds like a good place to start from. Um, so... Hang what? on, let me grab a glass of water. Sorry, yeah, go sure. ahead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Also, you need to check the door. Somebody's been ringing that doorbell for a few minutes while trying to get Amazon. It. <laughs> right. No problem, no problem. Keep talking. Well, I'll, right. I'll, when you get back, I'll just clip this gap out. Okay, so, sure. Yeah. Okay. So I've got, I've got to put it the video side by side. So. Okay, cool. Um, okay, so let's start with the separating white supremacy from whiteness. Um, how how uh, From white people, sorry. Uh, how how exactly do we go about doing that? What what's because as as I would understand it, um, uh, the concept of whiteness is that separate to the concept of white supremacy, or is it? So so let me, oh God, my God. So I'm sorry. Uh, sorry about that. Uh, let me ask you this: You as a white man, are you able to say to yourself and to other people, "I am a white supremacist," well, or I mean, are you are I, you able I, to say that? I, I could I could physically say I am a white supremacist, but I don't believe myself to be a white supremacist. Do you acknowledge that white supremacy exists? There are white supremacists. I, I, didn't, I don't think I'd say we live in an active state of white supremacy. That's my thinking. We're not in an active state, but there are white supremacists around. Yeah, there are, but that's not... But just to say they are all white men and white people that have a little power or are white supremacists, no, and that's... Now we go to this narrative of using racism for everything we want to use it for. So I think that's problematic. So I think that, um, so here's what I can say, right? Because there's racial hierarchies in white supremacy. Everything is conditioned on anti-blackness, everything. So what what does that look like in Asian communities, specifically in my Indian community? It means that I'll give you a quote. A friend of mine growing up, Indian dude in Richmond, Virginia. So I grew up in the capital of the Confederacy a little bit more than 100 years after slavery ended, right? So he would get brutalized at school. He was called everything in the book. We all were, right? But he was also, he had other things going on. But I remember him specifically saying, at least we're not black. Okay? At least we're not black. Yeah. Okay. (laughs) So anti blackness Hmm. is, is the benchmark of everything. So I, for me to say that I'm not anti-black is intellectually dishonest. I am anti-black because I was raised anti-black. So what does that mean? Acknowledging that I'm anti-black, why can't you do that? Why can't you say that? Because you can't you can't change anything. You can't dismantle systems of oppressions hmm. of oppression until you acknowledge it. So what do I, what does that mean for me? I check myself every day. I think about this stuff every day. I tweet about this stuff every day. I have meetings with lots of black and brown and white people talking about this but it would be incredibly hypocritical for me to point my finger at white people and saying you know you guys are white supremacists without checking my own anti-blackness and that's the reality so so when i say why can't you you, we get nowhere we get nowhere in this Hmm. if you can't acknowledge you are complicit in systems of oppression 
then it's a very easy way to be part of the problem. This feels like just all victim. Well, I hear where she's going. I mean, I understand. However, does everybody share the same views as her or have this, she said, complicit, you know, pretty much bias? I mean, do, do, do we all think like this? I don't think, you know, I don't think Good so. Um, but I, I do hear where she's coming from about the base of where the racism start is anti, you know, you know, who glad I'm not this, glad I'm not that, you know. Well, and yeah, I believe that. I no, get I that, that. Yeah, but true. but it's still the underlying gist of what she's saying is it's going to be black. I'm glad I'm not black because of this, glad I'm not black because of that, you know. But that's just the narrative that has been, you know, Thanks. painted. And I guess that's what she's, you know, somewhat saying. But I still feel like it's shifted to a degree, especially with the newer generation, because they are definitely not really falling well to a lot to the racist card yeah i agree not the solution so i've got lots of white friends there are lots of white people who are in this anti-racist racism space so you can talk all you want i'm not racist that guy's racist i'm not mm. racist the kkk is racist it it, it deflects right and why do marriages fall apart marriages fall apart because people don't talk about things mm. and um people don't acknowledge their own fault in things that's why relationships end white supremacy misogyny ableism all these systems of oppression persist because people cannot acknowledge their own complicity it is very easy so i watched her thing with candace owen and and which was was interesting and i find her to be interesting um especially when she said that donald trump saved western civilization i'd love to chat with her about that a little bit more right okay. uh, she's not wrong to say that Democrats expect all black and brown people to be Democrats. Democrats yeah, that's, that's are every fact. bit as racist as Republicans. Yeah. Every bit as racist, except they're in the closet about it. Republicans, frankly, are pretty out in the open about their racism. Right, okay. Um, okay, so can I... Okay, so... Oh, my God, there's, there's so much... Uh, so much here that um, I, I... Like I said, I don't even know where to begin. Um, okay, so... Like, I... The only the only way it seems that you're suggesting that I can be um, anti-racist or in in any way not racist, not even anti-racist, but just uh, a racist, is for me to be checking my privilege with black and brown people every day, talking about it and promoting black voices, this sort of thing. Um, it seems like a kind of form of self-abasement, and it comes from a position that I think is a that includes a, a series of presuppositions that I don't consider myself to hold, like. For, okay, I mean, I suppose the first thing we should talk about is what's your definition of oppression? How do you how do you conceive of the term oppression? Sure, it's power dynamic. Who has power over whom, and who is keeping people down, and who is who is who is there to maintain power? And again, I'll be very like in the United States, that is white men, right. cisgendered straight white men in most. See, you just lost me. Let's keep going. Case is also wealthy. That's that's those are the people who are in power. Um, what you're seeing right now in Congress with these mm -hmm. like badass brown and black women who've like taken charge, all of the nonsense surrounding them is because it's it's very it's very jarring to see people who look like me now suddenly in their ranks of power. You're seeing the reaction is like freaking out, and frankly, freaking out on both sides. Right? Mm -hmm. The Republicans are freaking out about Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez just, and you know who else is freaking out? The the left, the, oh, yeah. the, yeah. the liberal, right? They can't handle it because people like her are not supposed to be powerful. And so that's what I'm talking about oppression is like how who has the power and what is being done to maintain power and what is, but by keeping things out of the dialogue, by writing me off as a reverse racist, by writing me off as crazy or hateful, um, it's a very easy way of keeping the the status quo in place. Right. So, I mean, that's correct. It, they are trying to maintain a kind of status quo. But I, so I I don't I don't consider re, uh, oppression to be um, 
who is using what form of power to hold another in a certain position. That's not how I would define re uh, oppression. I would define it as cruel or unusual treatment over a prolonged period of time. Um, I think that hierarchies have to be justified. Now, there are, I think there are some hierarchies that are justified, some hierarchies that aren't justified. And the way that I think that we in the West do justify hierarchies is through democracy. We elect our leaders, and that's how we consider them to be legitimate. So if we end up electing white people or black people or brown people, whoever, um, as long as they've gone through a formal electoral process and there's no evidence of any kind of corruption involved there that swung the vote, then I don't see why I would consider any of these elected leaders to be illegitimate. And so any decisions that they made regarding the laws, I would necessarily have to find legitimate following on from that because they were an elected leader, and which means that if someone breaks a law, then they are breaking an, an, an they are breaking a legitimate law, and so they are the ones in the wrong, and so they should be punished for that. Mm -hmm. um, but, is it, but you don't seem to see it that way. You you see it as just being the status of having the position of power in the first place. Is that correct? Well, even under your definition, mm -hmm. um, it still works. And so, again, I come back to why I think Donald Trump has actually done sort of a good thing. Well, well hang on. Before, before we go on, <laughs> when you say it still works, what what do you mean there? Because I, I think that there's a contradiction there. What I'm trying to tell you right now okay. is um, I don't believe we have a democracy. Right. We don't have a democracy. Okay. Our democracy is a farce. It's yeah. a total farce. So uh, elections are bought and sold right. completely. I mean, there's just there's no question about that. And we have well, well, what, what do you mean by bought and sold? As in companies, companies buy elections. Yeah, yeah. You, you mean influence in the media, right? It's not, not not just influencing the media. Companies pay. Look, like our greatest Democrats. Go look at where Nancy. Guess go look who's funding Nancy Pelosi's hmm. campaigns. Go look at who's funding Elizabeth Warren and. And Diana Deget, the woman that I that I ran against, pharmaceutical companies, healthcare companies, and on the other side, it's you know the NRA, the gun lobbies. They're funding, they're getting these people elected, and then they're beholden to these people. So that's what I mean. Okay, but but before I mean, we before we jump on that, because I mean, getting these people elected, what they you what they're surely doing is giving them money to be to be able to influence the media. I mean, they're not simply like buying votes, raw votes. But you know, I disagree on that. I mean, like I I, I fundamentally disagree on that. Why would why would um, a pharmaceutical company give millions of dollars to a candidate, period? I mean, there's just... Well, it's, it's, it's so the candidate will act in their interest, but they, they still can't force the voters to vote for the candidate. They, so the, the, I mean, don't get me wrong, I'm totally against like, the corporate side of the Democrats and Republican parties. You know, I, I think that they're, they're atrocious and people should vote against them. I mean, I've, I've never taken any corporate money myself and I'm just a YouTuber, you know, but I, I don't do that on principle. Um, so I, I completely agree that they are buying candidates, but I don't agree that it's the same as buying the democracy because people still have to vote for the candidates. The, the corporations aren't buying the votes to give to the candidates. The the candidates are using their influence, and frankly, I mean, it's an unhealthy relationship between the corporate media, the corporate candidates, and these great companies that make up the establishment. That they they form a healthy, an unhealthy sort of symbiotic relationship. And I completely agree. But I don't agree that that's the same thing as saying we don't live in a democracy. It, it's just one of the forces that exists within democracy. Mm -hmm. 